All right, guys, here we go. Field day 2022 with the North Fulton Atlanta Radio League and your boy, the Metro Atlanta Ham. Today, I just want to talk to everybody about the fact that ham radio is for everybody and ham radio wants you. We want to get 1,000 people to learn about how to get their technician's license and join the ham radio hobby. We want to keep it alive and we want it to flourish for generations to come. You know, so you got to ask yourself sometimes, why ham radio? Well, one of the things about ham radio that I love is the tech. Let's take a look at my site. Let's take a look at my fully capable mobile command center. Right now, guys, I'm running a series of HF antennas that allow me to talk to people all over the world, whether it be digital, Morse code, with my voice, and a wide variety of other messages. I can do keyboard to keyboard text messaging. I can talk to the International Space Station. I can receive pictures from the International Space Station. It doesn't get any better than that. Another aspect of it is take a look at this technology that I like to partake in. This is my good boy. This is Omar D2. Omar D2 is just a cool addition to the overall nerdy, super techie environment that's associated with amateur radio. But, but honestly, when I'm working on a mountaintop and on a soda, I bring our, uh, Omar D2 so that if I lose myself on a trail, I can send a drone up and I can basically find a trail. It's been said that some people get lost sometimes and they're only one mile away from the exit of the environment that they're in. So me, when I'm inside my soda backpack, which is what called Summits on the Air, I like to keep Omar D2 with me at all times. Another aspect of it, and we can continue to talk about the technology, solar, solar power. Battery and solar power are very big in amateur radio, and it contributes to amateur radio's independence. It's commonly said that in, in places like the Caribbean, once they lose everything in a hurricane, the only people that have access to the outside world are the amateur radio operators, because we don't require a lot. You give me a bunch of car batteries, a few battery series together or parallel or whatever the case may be, you give me 12 volts, we can make it happen with amateur radio. And so the solar panel is a very big part of my gear and that independence that amateur radio provides. You ever kill a deer and skin it yourself? You ever grow a tomato? Well, that's what it feels like when you set up an antenna and you make a contact all the way to Europe right here from your backyard. You can be in Arkansas, you can be in Kansas, you can be in Louisiana, you can be in Florida, and you can have a cup of coffee and talk to your buddy all the way in Oregon. It doesn't matter, as long as you acquire the skills. And, you know, I got a saying, if you ain't doing ham radio, then you ain't doing ham radio when it's time to do ham radio. Commonly, what people call when stuff hits the fan. You gotta train it, it's just like any other skill. And as you guys can see, here is my tent that I got set up for field day. I'm running a lot of stuff. I got the Doomsday Radio set up, and you guys know all about the Doomsday Radio. I got my buddy controls for Omar D2. We're going to set Omar down. We're not going to keep burning up his batteries. Landing. We're going to burn. There you go, Omar. Sit down, my good buddy. You know, you know, so what does it take to get a ham license? One of the first things that you have to do is understand that the FCC has radio frequencies broken down into three different categories. Category number one is FRS, Family Radio Service. Now FRS is typically any walkie-talkie that you can buy from Walmart, Home Depot, um, things that we give the kids is what we call Family Radio Service. You don't need a license to do this. You don't need, um, and you, you and your whole family can do it. There's limitations to FRS, however. FRS is pretty much very, very limited, maybe a mile or two at the most. Um, you can only get maybe a half a watt out many of the antennas. You can't modify the equipment when you're dealing with FRS. The next level up is what we call GMRS, and GMRS is where I got started. Here in Georgia, we have the North Georgia GMRS Network, and it's a group of guys that have their repeaters linked all together. So you can be at the top of Georgia, hit a repeater and talk to people way up in South Carolina. But GMRS is a type of radio service that's a little bit more robust than the FRS, but you still need a license. But this license, basically you don't have to take a test. You contact the FCC, you register for the license, and that license is good for 10 years, and you and your whole family can use that license. Now, the thing about GMRS as an entry-level family tool, it can definitely be used for disaster preparedness. You and your family can get busy with GMRS. Now, the limitations with GMRS. 
GMRS radios, they do have interchangeable antennas. You can upgrade the handheld transceivers. And what I mean by handheld transceiver, I mean this. This isn't a GMRS handheld, but this is a typical handheld transceiver with a removable antenna. With another aspect of GMRS is that you can talk on repeaters. I know a lot of you guys may not know what a repeater is, but let's look at it like this. If I have a handheld transceiver and I want to talk to my wife, who's about two miles away with GMRS, we probably can make the trip. But if my wife was 50 miles away, handheld transceiver to handheld transceiver, we won't make the trip. But if I put a repeater in the middle of our transmission, I can boost our communications up to let's say 50 or 60 miles between the two of us with just this five watt handheld radio. That's the cool thing about GMRS. Also, GMRS now allows you for mobile rigs that can put out a little bit more wattage. So theoretically, radio to radio with GMRS, you can get up to 30 miles, depending on the terrain and your location and where you live at. Especially people who live in the flat areas like Arizona and uh, places like California and the like. But if you live in a, in a, in a city, it's going to be, be a little bit more challenging. Now let's go up to amateur radio, where you got to take a test. You can use hamstudy.org, you can read the Gordon West books, and you can watch a ton of videos on YouTube about what it takes to study and learn how to get your technician's license. Now, once you get your technician's license, the sky is it's pretty cool. There's a bunch of digital modes that you can use through your local repeaters. There's a lot of radio to radio communications. And then the technician range is where people are going to start teaching you how to explore the different genre of amateur radio. You know, you got guys in amateur radio that like to do satellites. You like the guys who like to mountain climb and use radios. You got guys who like to sit in their shack and transmit at a thousand watts and log every contest and log every contact. And you got guys that like to do the Arduino stuff. You got guys that like to do the weather balloon stuff. These are awesome things that you can do once you get your technician's license. Upon receiving the technician's license, at that point you can test for the general license and the amateur extra, which is the creme de la creme of all amateur radio. With this license, you can um, pretty much take advantage of all of the spectrum that's been provided to us by the FCC. You know, and if you wanna, I wanna talk to you guys about my journey. I came into amateur radio through GMRS. And then when it was time, I got in contact with my local radio club, the local amateur radio club, and I got motivated and I took my test online. I took my test online via Zoom with the Anchorage, Alaska, Amateur Radio League. These guys were testing for 10 bucks. They set up your test. And basically, I took my test and that same day I had my call sign. Several months later, I signed up with the Auburn University Amateur Radio Club and I took my um, general online because most of my testing was done during COVID. But, you know, Amateur Radio to me has been a, a fresh breath of air as far as being stimulated. I like it. I love it. And I want some more of it. And I want everybody to join and, and, and start taking advantage of the fun. And it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your profession. Only thing that matters is your will to put in the work and study and get your tech license, your general license, and continue to rise. So guys, this is the Metro Atlanta Ham. You can contact me. You can hit, uh, as you leave in the comments, if you like, and any information that anybody likes, I'll send them what I can to help them get into the trade. We want 1,000 new hams as a result of this video. And, and, and it's not self-serving, it's serving the hobby, keeping the hobby alive. All right, guys, this is Metro Atlanta Ham. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to look at my video, and uh, I'll be in touch. And as my good friend says, W4UYE, I'll catch you guys down the log.